I want you to hit me as hard as you can. Theorizing that one could time travel within his own lifetime, Dr. Sam Beckett stepped into the Quantum Leap Accelerator. And with that line of dialogue, my love of TV began. Sometimes people ask me, if you had a magic wand and could bring back one TV show from cancellation, which show would it be? There is no doubt in my mind, no hesitation, it would be Quantum Leap. If you don't know what Quantum Leap is, turn off this video and go watch it. It's one of the most underrated and amazing shows that I have ever seen. The show revolves around Dr. Sam Beckett, a physicist and all-around genius who creates a time travel experiment for the government called Project Quantum Leap. But when the funding from the government is in danger of being cut, Sam decides against everyone's warnings to jump into the accelerator and leap back in time. The premise of the show is that Sam travels in time and leaps into someone's body. So he replaces them in the past and they replace him in the future. And while they are in the waiting room, Sam is asked to change history, or rather make right what once went wrong. Sam is helped along the way by his best friend Al, his partner in Project Quantum Leap who appears as a hologram to Sam that only he can see and hear. With the supercomputer Ziggy and other members of Team Quantum Leap, like head programmer Gushi and psychiatrist Dr. Verbena Beeks, they provide the vital history to Sam that he needs in order to help the people he leaps into. The show ran from 1989 to 1993, and it immediately developed a hardcore fan base. How hardcore? Well, it made a network bend to its will in the days before the internet. It still lives on in the Leaper's hearts, and it still lives on in my heart. But is the love I feel for this show warranted? Can it possibly leap back? Do I and other Leapers even think that it could? But as the show says, can we make right what once went wrong? Let us find out in this episode of Gone But Not Forgotten. <laughs> Quantum Leap was created by Donald P. Belisario, who created other classic TV shows like Magnum P.I., Airwolf, Jag, and the TV show you put on in the background while you're doing something else, NCIS. He also wrote for the original Battlestar Galactica, and by 1989, Belisario had just finished Magnum P.I. and Airwolf, so he was at his prime, and decided he wanted to make a show he had always wanted to do, an anthology show something which the networks always hated to air. They wanted a show where you would have a set environment full of a steady cast of characters which audiences could tune into every week without thinking too much. You know, kind of like NCIS. Oh, snap! Yeah, I said it. Bitch all you want, but NCIS is a boring-ass show. Anyway, Belisario figured that the only way he could sell an anthology show was to get creative with it, which is how he came to the idea of using time travel. This would allow him to have two characters that the audience could fall in love with, but which would feature a new story every week. He pitched the idea to NBC executive Brandon Tartikoff, who had wanted him to produce a Silver Surfer TV show. Wait, what? You mean to tell me that we could have had a Silver Surfer TV show from the guy who created Quantum Leap? What the absolute fuck? I don't know if I should feel sad or happy about that. On one hand, he created such an amazing show like Quantum Leap, but on the other, what kind of special effects could they have even used on a TV budget in 1989? But Tartikoff believed in Belisario's idea and approved it, which I think was the best decision he ever made. The show starred none other than the man, the legend, Scott Bakula, who actually won a Golden Globe for this show, and was nominated four times for an Emmy, but sadly never won, which is just criminal. However, three of those losses were to some amazing actors, Peter Falk, James Earl Jones, and Christopher Lloyd. And I understand those losses, but on his last nomination, he lost the Emmy to Tom Skerritt. Oh, fuck you, Emmys. I'm not knocking Tom Skerritt, but at the time, he was on picket fences. Picket fences. I mean, come on. I know I'm going to get some hate from picket fences fans, but that's a forgettable show. Whenever somebody says, do you remember picket fences? I always go, mm, I remember the title and yeah, that's about it. Scott is an amazing actor and I can't believe I even have to say that. 
because if you see anything he's in, he always gives 110%. You could be watching a buddy cop show with a talking turd who is partners with Scott Bakula. And even then you would say, man, that show's a piece of shit. But I'll keep watching it just for Bakula. So he could make anything better. Well, almost. Also, you could not help but root for Sam, as he was played as the nicest guy by Bakula. He always wanted to do the right thing, and show compassion even to those who at times did not deserve it. He could also be a badass, like in the episode All Americans, where Sam leaps into a high school football player that needs to stop his best friend from throwing the big game. The kid is tempted to do so when the slimy slumlord tells him that he will throw his mother and him out on the street if he does not throw the game. And I just love how Sam handles this dickhead. I want you to stay away from Chewie and his mom. I don't think I heard you, punk. I'll write it down if you can read. Belisario was also very clever in setting up the rules for the show, which go as follows. A person who leaps back in time can only leap within his own lifetime. So if, let's say, you were born on February 14th, 1974, that day is as far back as you can go. Also, when you leap into someone, you appear as that person to everyone else, regardless of their age, gender, or sex. Sam also experiences partial amnesia, which means he has to be reminded about standard historical facts, and even has to be reminded about most of his own past, not to mention his abilities. We come to learn in the series that Dr. Beckett has seven doctoral degrees in medicine, quantum physics, astronomy, languages, music, and chemistry, just to name a few. He also knew kung fu, and has photographic memory. By the way, isn't having photographic memory just an oxymoron when you suffer from partial amnesia? I really like sci-fi and supernatural shows which have rules, and I don't really know why. Is it just a structural mental thing? Or is it that I admire any writer who can find creative ways to tell their story while still following their rules? I really hate shows where things just happen just because they need them to. It's just lazy in my opinion. But I really hate it, and I mean hate it, when rules are broken just because the writer realized they painted themselves into a corner and decide to go, ah well, fuck this. This is why I hate Dead Like Me. In the pilot, they say the only way someone can move on is by eventually touching someone who has chosen to be a Reaper. Then like four episodes in, they go, Ah, forget what I said. Ugh, don't get me started on that show. Back to Quantum Leap. I will admit there are some cheats from time to time, like how Sam leaps beyond his birthday, but then the writers find explanations like, Oh, well, it's really from when he was conceived. A lot of the breaking of these rules or plot holes can just be explained away. And for every plot hole brought up, there's someone who can come up with a satisfactory explanation. It's pretty neat to read the debates over these broken rules, so discuss your theories amongst yourselves in the video's comments below. However, there was one cheat that I was not on board with, and it was when Sam leaped back into the Civil War. And they explained that he's only able to do this because he leaped back into his great, great, whatever, grandfather. Uh, yeah, I'm calling bullshit on this one. Now, what happens to the person that Sam leaps into? Well, they actually leap into his body over in the future, and are kept in what Al calls the waiting room, which is really just a fancy word for conference room. And I really enjoy the episodes whenever they would play around with this waiting room concept. But the only question they do not answer is what happens to the people who he leaped into whenever they leap back into their bodies. Do they remember the waiting room? Do they have Sam's memories of what happened while they were gone? Is it just a blank? Did their personalities change whenever they came back? Not a clue whatsoever, but it's still pretty cool to speculate over it. And that's why I'm such a fan of this show. It had great actors, great stories, and some cool geek lore you could sink your teeth into. Fans of Quantum Leap like myself were passionate about this show. And it gained such a hardcore following that the fans actually saved it from cancellation. Around Season 3, NBC decided to move the show to Friday Nights, aka the dreaded death slot. And when fans found out, a letter-writing campaign ensued, and the network ended up receiving 50,000 letters. Let me repeat that, 50 
thousand letters. It was such a big deal that NBC did end up moving it back to Wednesday night and even aired this commercial. Love you, babe. Let's do lunch. Jerk. Recently, I've received a few letters from fans of Quantum Leap demanding that I move it back to its original Wednesday night time slot. Listen, I run this network. Nobody tells me what to do. You know what I have to say to the fans of Quantum Leap? You win. By popular demand, Quantum Leap leaps back home to Wednesday on NBC. But let us get back to talking about the show. Namely, the coolest character on the show, Al Calavici, Sam's sidekick. Al proved to be Sam's lifeline through his time-tripping adventure, providing the information that Ziggy gives him of the original history, which Sam will need to change in order to cause him to leap. And much to Sam's annoyance, drool over any woman that Al sees. Seriously, dogs in heat have less of a libido than this man did. Al was played by Dean Stockwell, a veteran TV and film actor with a career spanning 70 years. Let's take that in for a second. Dean Stockwell has been acting for 70 freaking years. He's been nominated for an Academy Award and won other prestigious awards from the Golden Globes and the Cannes Film Festival, just to name a few. Stockwell could be incredibly funny. In one second, he has you laughing your ass off, and the next, he has you crying your eyes out. I think that what I love most about the series is that almost every episode of it is good, even if it could be formulaic at times. This is all because of Bakula and Stockwell's chemistry. They really play well off of each other and enhance their individual performances in the process. But when the episode is good, it is oh so good. Some of my favorite episodes regard civil rights, such as So Help Me God, which is basically a To Kill a Mockingbird type of episode where Sam leaps into an attorney of a young black woman who's been accused of murder. This episode could have gone off the rails real quick, but the performances just make it a million times better. And the same goes for a later episode based off of Driving Miss Daisy, where Bakula and the other actors make you forget the source material. Other episodes could be inspired by other genres, such as the season one episode Play It Again Seymour, a film noir murder mystery where Sam leaps into a detective who looks exactly like Humphrey Bogart that has to find out who killed his partner. Was it his partner's sex pot wife, who he is currently having an affair with? Jesus, with the way she looks, I don't care if she kills everyone in the building, although she is prone to saying some pretty weird things. I don't know if I could love a man who killed my husband. Um, good to hear? Sam also has a sidekick who is the local paper boy named Seymour. Now here's where I'd like to point out that this show has a lot of episodes featuring actors who you know, but there is a bit of a catch. You'll find yourself having this conversation with your friends many times while watching this show. Oh hey, it's that guy or girl. Whoa, cool, who are they? Uh, I have no idea. I'm sure a lot of you will know who these people are, but you will at least have that conversation once. That's not to say there weren't any actors who went on to have big careers. You have Jason Priestley, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, and Jennifer Aniston, just to name a few. Another episode I love is Pool Hall Blues, where Sam leaps into an elderly pool shark named Charlie Black Magic Walters, who has to save his granddaughter's nightclub from a sleazy loan shark by playing the ultimate game of pool. This is where we get to see something that the show's creators always do any chance they get, getting Scott Bakula to sing. Bakula also happens to be a Broadway actor, so every time he belts something out, it's just amazing. When you're feeling down And there's trouble all around you When it seems like nothing Is gonna turn out right when you just can't see any silver lining Put your hands together and just hold on tight Sam has a fanboy that follows him around throughout the episode named Grady. Grady is a real sweetheart and, uh, wait, what the hell are you doing, pal? Don't you dare touch Grady! Come on, Sam, kick his ass! Yeah, that's right, don't you fuck with Grady! 
If there's one episode I think you should all avoid, it would be the pilot episode, which is really bad. Although the prologue to it is pretty good, seeing as it takes place in the far future of 1995. Oh yeah, you can tell it's the future because everyone has LED lights in their jewelry. This is probably in my list of the top 10 worst pilots for a great TV show ever made. It takes forever to set up the concept of Sam being stuck in time and Al being a hologram. God, just so much unnecessary filler. With Sam being confused and wondering why he feels so weird, being this test pilot, and then trying not to die while breaking Mach 10. Oi, just skip it. Speaking of bad episodes, this series did have a couple of real stinkers, such as Sam leaping into a vampire, or Dr. Ruth. Yeah, he jumps into the body of a 4 foot 7 inch elderly sex expert. So stupid. But the dumbest, the most boneheaded episode of all that had me straight up cringing is the wrong stuff, where Scott Bakula has to play a chimpanzee. Yeah, you heard me right. Dr. Sam Beckett, the man who has seven degrees, winds up leaping into the body of a test monkey. Who the hell was doing acid when they wrote the script, and who was high on cocaine when they greenlit this episode? I mean, dear lord, man, why? Just why? There were also some very good holiday episodes, like the Halloween episode, The Boogeyman, which has a really cool twist ending. There's also probably one of my favorite Christmas TV episodes that I watch every December called A Little Miracle, which is basically the show's take on A Christmas Carol. Yeah, it's not anything out of this world, but Stockwell really knocks it out of the park when he plays the Ghost of Christmas Future. I will say this though, even though we love Sam, he could be a real dick sometimes, like in the episode M.I.A. In this episode, Sam leaps into a police detective in 1969, and Al tells him that in order to leap, he must stop a widow from marrying another man, because her husband isn't dead, but rather a prisoner of war. It turns out though, that this is Al's ex-wife, who remarried while he was still a P.O.W. And that's when Sam says this little nugget. You know the rules, Al. We can't change our own lives. I'm sorry, what did you say, Sam? I don't think I heard you. You know the rules, Al. We can't change our own lives. What the hell are you talking about, you asshole? You literally changed the future of a woman who left you at the altar in the freaking second episode. You leap back twice to save your brother. You can't help him keep the love of his life. He's your best freaking friend. Speaking of which, Al has a heartbreaking scene where he dances with his wife and tells her how much he loves her even though he knows she can't see him. Fun fact for you, Stockwell actually got mad at Belisario who wrote this episode. He told him that doing such an emotional scene would require him to tap into his own personal pain, and made him promise not to write something as painful as that ever again. But as I mentioned, Sam does leap back to his teenage self and tries to save his brother who died in Vietnam. Not only that, he actually tries to change his entire family's future. For example, he tries to save his father from having a heart attack and his sister from marrying an abusive husband. There's actually a beautiful scene where Bakula and Stockwell sing John Lennon's Imagine to his sister. Belisario actually said that the actress who played his sister became emotional while they sang to her. I mean, wouldn't you become emotional if you had heard this? Easy, you, fool. you might say I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. I hope someday you'll join us. The last season of Quantum Leap was so good. This is where they really started thinking outside the box, such as introducing evil leapers. But the last season is when my favorite episode aired, entitled Lee Harvey Oswald. Not only did I really enjoy it, but it was also fairly historically accurate. So here's the story behind the story. Belisario actually met Lee Harvey Oswald in the army and got into an argument with him because of his communist obsession. His friends yanked him away before the two came to blows and told him to forget it since Oswald was just harmless. Decades later, his son came home from watching Oliver Stone's JFK and began to talk about conspiracy theories. 
Belisario told his son that he met Oswald in the army and was convinced that he was capable of killing the president himself without any conspiracy. So he decided to write this two-part episode. By this point in the series, Sam began to experience memories and abilities of the people he leaped into. It was a residual effect of the leap. But when he leaped into Oswald, since he was so deranged, he began to be taken over more and more by him, until Sam almost completely loses himself and nearly pulls the trigger. Also, it's pretty funny that the actor Willie Garson, who was in that episode I loved back in season one, also plays Oswald in Ruby. God damn it, not Rudy, Ruby! Come on, guys! Okay, so it's come to that point in the video where we are going to talk about the most controversial episode of the series. The series finale. And this is where we must say goodbye to all of you who have never seen the show before. So stop watching this video. Seriously, do not watch past this point. Do not read the comments. Don't do it! You have to see this episode for yourself. For me to spoil it for you would be a tragedy. If you want to know the answer to the question I always ask in every episode about whether this show should or should come back, yes, the show should come back, okay? Watch the show, watch the episode, and then come back, watch this video, and post a comment if you want. So go, right now, shoo, adios, andale arriba, get the hell out of here. Are they gone? Okay then. So, the last episode is the most controversial episode of the entire series, and in my opinion, one of the most controversial moments in all of television history. In the finale, Sam leaps back in time to his day of birth in a small mining town. That's right, he has actually leaped into himself, and for most of the episode has conversations with a mysterious bartender who may actually be God. But at the end of the episode, the bartender reveals to Sam that he too has been leaping himself, and can leap home whenever he wants. But the reason why he keeps leaping is because he wants to make the world a better place. So Sam leaps back in time to make up for something he always felt guilty that he never did, telling Al's ex-wife that he is still alive, thus changing history and causing Al to be happily married with children. And then we get the biggest slap in the face when we get this title card. What. The. Fuck. What the fuck. WHAT THE FUCK! He never came back home? He never came back home! That is so mean. That is so disrespectful to the fans. Hell, you even misspelled his fucking name! A lot of the show's fans feel divided by this ending, as there are some who actually liked it. And I'm sorry, I respect your opinion, since you love the show like I do. But I just don't understand how you could think that. I think this is a really horrible ending to the series. And for many years, we thought this was it. This was the end of Quantum Leap. Until decades later, when Quantum Leap mega fan and YouTuber Allison Pregler got her hands on some film negatives showing an alternate ending to the show, where Al decides to find Sam, who has disappeared into the time stream. If it wasn't for Allison, this alternate ending would have just stayed a rumor. And by the way, you guys should check out her podcast, The Quantum Leap Podcast, and her YouTube channel, Movie Nights. Anyway, a year later, the actual scene leaked onto the internet. So here it is. Well, wherever Sam has leaped, He's still himself. Because no one's in the waiting room. Yeah, and we're going to start a nanosecond search in the morning. But that'll take months. By then, he will have leaped again. What? It didn't take you months to find him. I must have got lucky. Yes, Admiral Calvary, he had nothing. The two of you are so close, it makes me envious. You'll find him. Now, isn't that ending awesome? Man, that would have been a great season six. But as always, let us answer the question we always ask. Should the show come back? Oh boy. 
Well, guys, this is super hard for me to say, but yes. And trust me, I don't say that easily. Quantum Leap is one of my all-time favorite shows, so for me to even conceive of it coming back is incredibly hard, especially since only Bakula would be able to come back, as Dean Stockwell sadly suffered a stroke in 2015. And even though he has recovered, he is unfortunately retired from acting. It's definitely a shame, but if anyone deserves to retire, it's a man who has been acting his ass off for 70 years. Belisario has actually stated that he wrote a Quantum Leap movie, but that it was more of a reboot than a continuation, and that doesn't exactly sit well for me. But if anyone should be in charge of a reboot, it should be Belisario. Quite frankly, I wouldn't mind more of a soft reboot, where we have a new scientist following in Sam's footsteps and winds up becoming a Leaper himself while on a mission to find Sam. That's really the only way I could see a Quantum Leap reboot working, and even then, I am uneasy with the thought. But either way, we are still left with an amazing show. Sadly, I couldn't really find anywhere you could stream the show for free. It used to be on Netflix about two years back, but that's gone. So if you want to see it, you'll have to pay for it on Amazon. But if there is any show that you should pay to see, it is Quantum Leap. And really, that's the only way you can make right what was once made wrong. <laughs>